All right, welcome to the Golf Locker Room. Welcome to the Golf Locker Room. It is Wednesday. Every Wednesday, we are live and in full color, all up in your phone, all up in your computer. What up, everybody? Uh oh, we got a, uh, we got. I hope we got permission uh, to show this baby on on live TV. Tell us about that. <laughs> okay, y'all. Know, you know, I'm coming live from VA. Come up here with my daughter and my grandson and family, and so. Just wanted to let him come in so he can say hello to you guys and meet meet the family, you know, on the podcast. Nice. He's going to be playing golf soon. We said we're going to start him at 2. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. What's he eating on? Is that an upside-down banana? Yeah, you know them teething rings? They got these special little teething rings now. Oh, nice. This. Yeah. Does he got any teeth yet? Not yet, but he's trying to get them. It's coming, he's huh? Just, it's he's just coming. six months, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's coming, he's coming. Nice, yeah, nice, yeah, nice. beautiful hair. Hey, oh yeah, nice, 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 beautiful. Big Sif, what up? What's good with you, bro? How are you living? Oh man, I can't complain. Uh, cold, very cold in the morning, then eighty in the afternoon. You know, California, we in that mid range, but still good golf weather. Still good golf weather. Can't That's complain. The San Diego weather, man. Yeah, wow. man. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, it's 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 uh, it's all right. Can't complain because they what y'all about to get a big cold storm, or is it there already? Or is it maybe it's going up Midwest? Yeah, I think it's, it's tornadoes. Up. I think it's the uh east, upper east, north, north. It's not a northeaster, but it's going that way. Yeah, we it's about to be some crazy. I think Utah and all kind of stuff had snow already, and you know, some tornadoes. It's uh, it's going down. All right, um, both hats on, man, huh? Oh yeah, that's right, Charlie Sefford. Yeah, off like locker him, room. Man. Oh yeah, 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 it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's yeah. coming. We may as well have a little misarch. You know yeah. what I mean? Misarch, like it's coming. Like, hey, hey man, before we dive, life. before we dive in, man, um, and you know, I know this is probably off topic. You know how I am sometimes, but let's in in two minutes, man. What do you think about critical race theory? Critical race theory. Crit critical race theory is a made up, some made up outrage that is made up outrage from the right just to push buttons. You know, it's election time. So it's it, it's just to keep it 100. We got to keep it 100 on the show, no matter what we're talking about. It's the scare white people time. It's crime everywhere. It's critical race theory. It's 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 the left wants to beat parents up and not let them have choices for their kids it's basically let's scare the white people so they'll vote for the conservatives and that's just what i think my opinion critical race theory was taught at howard as a college level course to right. dig down deep into a complicated issue right right and so it's a college level class for debate for thinking had nothing to do with middle school, high school, elementary, and they just try to put minutia over a topic that's very complicated and no one really reads the whole story. They just hear critical race theory. That, that's a scary word for some Americans. That's like, ooh, critical race theory. You know what I mean? So basically, and then you've had some that support critical race theory kind of bastardize it too which doesn't help right no doubt. but the facts but the but the facts were is uh it was a class derived in howard to dig deep into uh racism in america social economical psychological ways that it affected african americans and it's a very deep and detailed and nuanced topic that can't be put in a soundbite. But if you want to scare some people, you know, a soundbite it is, and people bite into it. What was your take on it? That was my take on it, because, you know, I kind of try to go deep and understand yeah. exactly. Well, I mean, um, and my take was similar to yours, uh, but then 
you know, once it's out there, uh, it's morphed into other things. And I, and I think, I mean, for me, I think for the good, I think people of color actually need to look at it because like you said, it was a, a course that started Howard, but now all of a sudden, Harvard. I mean, Har Harvard now. Yeah. Harvard. But now all of a sudden it's getting some traction. Um, you, like you said, some people use it as a scare attack. Some people politicize it. However, since it's here, you know, I think people, especially people of color, need to look at it in depth um, and also use it uh, to their advantage, especially during during uh, uh, these elections, because no one wants to go deep. No one wants to um, speak about things that happened in the past. I posted something earlier today about, you know, men. I'm sure you would lay your life down for uh, your child, your family. No, what, what, I mean, no question. No, no one has to. Well, you think you're gonna lay your life down? No, I'm gonna lay my life down. Especially from where you're from, you're gonna do it. And so, you're talking about grown men back in the day that didn't have any power. So whatever happened to their families happened. You know, daughters being auctioned off, wives uh, up at the yeah. big house sleeping with the master. T so you had tough a business. Yeah, you had a man that was powerless at that point in time. So I think. Things like that need to be taught. Things like that need to be put out there so that yeah, some definitely. type of education um, and not necessarily to make white people feel bad, but for them to understand and have some compassionate and empathy for where we have come uh, as a people. Yeah, huh. uh, but it's a nuanced subject and it should be taken very seriously and you can't soundbite it. And I don't think they should dumb it down, which they have not in high school no. and middle school. You know they're what I mean? Well, they're trying Leave to prevent it. it from being taught. They're, they well, are trying to prevent it from being taught. And to me, if if there wasn't something to it, there wouldn't be nothing to keep it from being taught. Yeah, they're, they're trying to keep it from being taught in high schools and middle schools, which was never even taught there. You know what I mean? So it's a fake argument that they want to have to argue about. Now, some teachers have taken pieces of other topics and they've, they tried the, 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 the opposition have tried to lump that into critical race theory, but critical race theory is a very serious topic with nuances that should be studied, studied at the higher levels right. in college. So you can get into it. Cause you know, when people go to college, most people, they really do want to learn. Right. No matter what race they are, they want to know the truth. Truth right. is key. And, you know, but it shouldn't be put in a TikTok soundbite or a sound. It doesn't do it justice. And it's easy to malign that and with fake information. And yeah. all you hear is the name. The name alone scares a lot of people. Right. It's ignorance, right. but the, the name alone scares you, a lot. You of had people. a professor, uh, I think she's on here now, uh, Dr. Bird, uh, was saying that. Uh, when she taught at uh, UNC Chapel Hill, the mm. white women were thirsty to know and understand truth. critical race theory. Right. That's exactly. dope, though. That's the, yeah. I mean, you got a lot of people that want truth. You got a lot of people that want knowledge because that's how you get better as a human, as a person, as a country. And, you know, when they bastardize it and politicize it and, you know, let's basically it's about let's get what group out to vote. Okay, critical race theory. They're telling you, soccer mom, that your kids aren't good enough. Your kids should be apologizing soon as they hit school in the sixth or fifth grade. This is the bastardizing that they do to scare soccer moms so maybe they can vote for DeSantis in Florida or maybe they'll vote for that congressperson in wherever because they're going to take it. And it's scare tactics time. It's scare tactics time. So, you know, critical race theory probably is not going nowhere, which is a good thing. Uh, I believe that it's good teaching. And I believe that definitely I want it. It should be like it was because I think whoever designed it wanted it to be taught at a higher level of education because how. You know, nuanced and deep it can get and they have time to do it at the college level so that's my that's my that's my little take on it i think uh don't be persuaded not to do it don't fall into the scare tactics and the traps of 
one line headlines or TikTok sayings or, you know, I mean, these are the same people, same people that refuse to wear a mask. You have people dying, <laughs> falling the fuck out right in front of them, dying, and they refuse to wear a mask. They refuse to get shots. They were talking about they're coming to they make you know. But these are the same people, right? That want to tell a woman what to do with her room, mm. but you can't tell them nothing about putting on a cloth mask. But they want to be deep in your ovaries, deep, <laughs> and have say. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I don't pay no mind to them. I don't pay no mind to him, and we should we should never pay no mind to that that craziness. But you know, let's get back on golf, 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 golf. Um, we all right, Masters. Before we dig into our topic, great times. Yes, uh, we posted something on IG. The Masters in living color. Tiger, Cam, HV three. Yes. Um, let me tell you, I don't care where they landed. They showed up and they showed out. They, they all made the cut. They all made the cut. Yeah. They all put some money in their pocket. Um, they all carried themselves with respect, dignity, and hard work. Cam top 10. Crazy. I'm going to say that again. Top 10. Guess who's going back next year? Yeah. And Harold, once again, once, once again, <laughs> proved he's a PGA Tour professional. You know, and doubt. he can play with the big guys. That's exactly. what I'm, let's give him. Yeah. And then we're going to save the big cat. We're going to save the big cat for last that uh, a hobbled. Mm. Car accident, back fusion, um, survivor, warrior. Definitely. Beat out Jordan Spieth, Brooks Kepka, Brian uh, Bryson, DeChambeau, Xander Shoffley. None of those made. None of those people made the cut. These are big time golfers. So, mm. and you know, and the course is no joke. That's a that the course is no joke. You play it well or you implode. Not to say they're not all gonna come back. You know, Spieth has won it. Uh I don't think Brooks won it yet. No. He's won the open and the champion no. players championship. No. No. And uh it's a lot of and um Miguel Roy's been knocking. That's his last one to try to get the grand slam. But it keeps eluding him. I think he's been second twice, boy. That's tough on him. If he would have just played a little like that in the uh, or is in the, uh moving right, if you if you just would have did that on Saturday, you might have got that grand slam. Yeah, but yeah. Scheffler right now, Scheffler right now he is playing ball. good ball. He's yeah. playing good ball. Just uh, no, he's just playing excellent golf. You know, right. he's playing excellent. He's to me. I mean, I watched him hit some recovery shots. That was just, it was his time. You ain't beating nobody in the twigs 130, 175 yards out in the dirt and pop that ball through five bunkers, you know, six feet from the hole when he should have took a bogey. It's his time. He's on fire. And golfers get like that. What say you guys? What was your takes? Chris? Uh, in regards to... Masters. So, Blasters. I was about to ping, message y'all. So, here's my thing. A, there was a post um, last week, and, and it bothered me. It bothered me. Um, we were talking about Cam, and I think Cam is doing great things. He's doing great things with the Youth Golf. He's doing great things with the Mac Champ Invitational. He's doing great things with the Cameron Champ Foundation. He yeah. is out there for our youth, right? Yeah. And I had somebody in my comments say, I cannot call a man black that has three white grandparents. Yeah. And when I tell you, I felt that was the most foolish thing I had ever heard in my life. Because again, if you have a drop of black blood, it don't matter. You black. And so the sad thing is, this man is, he's got, he don't, he not only got to fight, you know, to be on the tour, he not only got to fight against, you know, maybe like his own people, but he got to fight against some of us. 
And it makes no yeah. sense to me. Like that comment yeah. blew my mind. And, you know, and then we talk about Tiger. We loving it. Tiger's out there. He was hurt. I mean, I mean, he was looking at po possibly a prosthetic leg, right? And then he's out here playing in the Masters, walking it out. That was amazing. But then you hear, too, you hear the same thing. You know, I, uh, a comment was said, you know, the Cablasian piece. You know, this man don't want to claim that he's black. It's not that he doesn't want to claim that he's black. He wants to claim that he's everything that he is. So if he's Caucasian, if he's black, and if he's Asian, what's wrong with that? It's not denying that he's black. It's just specifying who, what all he stands for, right? Yeah, and so, yeah. um, and then Varner, I mean, he out there doing his thing, and it's beautiful to see because, again, until that man hit that million dollar win over there across seas and came back, and now he's winning and winning. I mean, we had another a lot, a lot of naysayers talking about it, yeah. you know. So it's amazing to see the three of them out there playing. They all made the cup. It, it was a beautiful thing to see. It was a beautiful thing to see. Yeah, we're going to have to just clean up some of this ignorance and stop it when we read it. And 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 all that that you just spoke on was that poison, that, 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 that lynch poisoning, <laughs> that lynch, that lynch poisoning. You know, uh, I made a comment like I've done my DNA just because I, I was. Think yeah 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 and i told him i was uh i think 28 uh, percent nigerian 22 percent congolese and 18 and 18 percent scottish right yeah yeah 18 percent scottish that's where the golf comes from no i'm just playing but yeah 18 percent scottish um you know these rules and this who's black and this who's not and this 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 blah 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 blah, blah. that is poison folks yeah it's poison we all came from some parts of africa against our will our ancestors have and if yeah. we can't get around you know i'm not counting nobody's in-laws and grandparents to see if who who's the gatekeeper of who's black or who's yeah. african American? who's the gatekeeper you know people are like, oh well that's just my opinion i was like mm -hmm. opinions are not supposed to be divisive if mm. we're talking about family opinions yeah. is not supposed to tear apart opinions i i think on that topic should be bringing people together and yeah. then you know and that just lets you know but you know what tiger hv3 today was on hv3 because of the wife you, you can't please oh, some God. people you can't yeah. please them and they yeah. was dead ass wrong then and they're dead ass wrong now and mm -hmm. I, I i you know these these guys not only harold cam you know they're creeping close to 10 million dollars in tour winning I'm gonna say that again. <laughs> they creeping close to ten million dollars, both of them, Ooh. in overall tour winnings. These are professional men. These are winners. These are um, uh, something we can be proud of. And Absolutely. you know that Lynchman, that Willie Lynch mentality. Sometimes, even in our golf groups, where we're supposed to be a little more educated, a little more open to ideas, seen the world a little more, met a lot more people. We still got hood talk, hood mentality. That we, we got a we got a four block mentality. Like I'm from South Central. I know a gang of people that's never seen the water. Guess what? Mm -hmm. The beach is 12 miles from South Central. You could ride your bike and not be tired. 12 miles to the beach from South Central. So mm -hmm. a lot of my homies never seen the water. They've only wow. lived in a they've only lived in a four block radius and uh, with a pretend protection over four or five blocks and will kill over four or five blocks blocks, just said blocks they don't own mm. but that's sometimes the box that some of us get in and yeah. i'm seeing that sometimes in our golf groups we living in a four block radius we're not opening our eyes we're not opening our minds we're not trying to have empathy we're not trying to put ourselves in other people's shoes we're just living in a box and whatever's in our box that's what's what that's what's real and we got to stop that the world is big life is fantastic get out the box let's Nothing love is, border 
the PJ tour on the PJ tour, who else is doing anything like Cameron for that? That's why I say for that comment, I'm telling you, I probably almost got kicked out of one of them groups because legitimately I try not to argue. I try not to go back and forth, but again, that, that ignorance, that talk, that conversation, and, 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 and it kept going back and forth. I'm like, why am I even entertaining it? But who else on the it. tour is doing anything like what Cam and the Champ family is doing? That's that's my question. Who my, else is my doing key, that? Yeah, my key is it's a minority even in the Facebook group. So let's not let the poison actually be the voice of the Black Golf Alliance or the Black Golf Association. I'm not even going – I don't want to tarnish them – with one or two people when they have a group of six to 20,000. You know what I mean? So maybe we'll, maybe we'll get it a pass. Cause I only seen one or two people even comment like that out of a group of six or 7,000 or a group of 30,000. So I'm not going to put that on that, but it's always one. It's yeah. our two. Well, the thing is, man, for me, uh, the Masters was, um, you know, it was great to watch. Um, it also, for me, um, it was great to see Charlie Jr., um, mm. you know, on the premises. Um, yeah, you know, that was that was huge, you know, knowing the history that, uh, you know, his dad uh, won the LA Open, which automatically puts you in Augusta, and then they changed the rules up. And so, mm. you know, it, it, was, it was great to see Charlie Jr. go. So, you know, I'll probably go afterwards. But... Just to Trisha's point and to, you know, to some of the comments, um, you know, it was beautiful to see, you know, Tiger, Cam, Harold. And what people fail to understand is you have no idea what a person is charged to do. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody's put a gun to Cameron's head to step up and advocate for social justice. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody's put a gun to Harold Varner's head. Uh, to go out there and 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 play on the tour and do his thing and Tiger, you know, do his and thing. does his junior thing, yeah. yeah, yeah. So so we have no idea what people are charged to do, and until we uh, and I tell you how you can stop talk like that, Trish, because see the thing is for me, golf is something that I do. It's not who I am, and so my thing is for Chris is, you know, I make sure that uh, these policies and politics are right in my local community because that's more important that's the, that's a direct impact to me not what tiger's doing not what harold's doing and not what cam's doing but a direct impact for the people in my community and so what you tell them is i tell you what since you guys are so adamant about what someone's not doing go down there to the to the election board and 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 put your name on the ballot for the next city council or the next mm -hmm. school board you know, I'll vote for you. Yeah. 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 It's, so, so now what you're going to get is, man, I'm not doing that. Well, if you're not going to do it or you're not going to step up to the plate to advocate for people in your community, then don't judge any of those guys for doing what they're doing. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's I mean, ridiculous, man. It's crazy. And I think that's what they want, though. I mean, it's just so minute people, a minute group of people that want us to talk about them for 10 minutes. And I'm going to stop because I just don't think that's the majority, not even close, not even 80, not even 10%. They have some opinions. They may not even believe what they even say. They just want to get a row and get some comments and some likes. You know what I mean? Or they may have their own opinion and they can just be uh, their opinion. You know? Nobody it is what it is. Yep, nobody, 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 it's nobody. Nice. Yep, but uh, again, the Masters was great. Living color, everybody did well. Everybody took some bread home. Uh, ranking points went up. And, you know, again, golf is good right now. Golf yeah. is being good right now for all of us. And, uh, you know, let's give them another shout out. All right. Um, you know, I think... And not, I think we're going to start into a new series and they'll be sporadic. It won't be week after week after week, but we tackle history. We've tried to get flowers to trailblazers and, 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 and policymakers. And we try to uplift 
the up and coming trailblazers that's paving a road for the future. Mm -hmm. And so now we're going to enter, now we're going to interject some straight up golf. Yeah. We have a lot of people and people, some don't like to admit it on the Facebook groups or the IG chats or whatever, because they don't want to be torn down. They just get one thing, which is true. Go get lessons, but like I'm a new golfer. Go, go, go find a teacher. <laughs> That's all they get. Go find the teacher. Go find the teacher. Go find the teacher. Which they should go find a teacher. I'm not yeah. saying that advice is not the right advice. I'm just saying we can be more welcoming. You know, we can we can be more welcoming. Yeah. We can give some tips before they go get a teacher. We can, yeah. we can explain why we say go get a teacher first yeah. because it would it will save them a lot of time it would save them a lot of headache it would save yeah. them a lot of bad habits yeah because not go get a teacher mm -mm. go get it you know we all, started, all, we all started somewhere right we all start we didn't well you know at least most of us did not start with a teacher because most of us didn't even know about golf yeah we didn't go and be like oh let's go get some clubs and i want to learn golf it was always most of us is some happenstance stuff my boy yeah. was like let's go to the range up the street i'm like what's the range the gun range can we bring some yeah. guns he's like no the golfing range i'm like let's go to the golfing range we had three clubs amongst both of us we had a seven <laughs> we had a seven and some kind of janky <laughs> hybrid before it was even a hybrid and and like a five and we, we would take turns with the seven because none of us could hit a five at that time. Just right. go with three clubs. You ain't hitting a five. It's too long. You don't even, you ain't hitting a five when you just start now. And it was older black men up there. And sure enough, they was like, here, here's your grip. Here's your, what if they looked at me and was like, go get a teacher. I, I wouldn't even be golfing right now. I'm right. telling. wouldn't have a golf league we wouldn't have a golf podcast they'd be like go get a teacher i would have turned right back around and been like i'm gonna get some hennessy <laughs> and go chill that's what i'm gonna go do I, you know I, I got two clubs yeah <laughs> but guess what no young brother come here put your hands like this just practice this don't even put a quit wasting your money on balls until you can hit that little foamy t right there you don't need yeah. a ball you just wasted money. You sit right there, make a V, here's your grip, hit that little plastic T. And when you can hit that consistently, then put a ball down. That was my first lesson. Uh, <laughs> that was my first lesson ever from some older gentleman that just looked at young black kids and was like, this is do this, do that. And that boom, 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 boom. I so, say, uh, yeah. With no, that I said, say, uh, go ahead. No, 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 go. No, so like for me, it was uh, scrambles. You know, I was putting tournaments together and raising money for it and had no idea how we, how are we raising all this money for these tournaments? And I don't even know nothing about this golf other than putt-putt golf. And then so I started playing in the scrambles that I would put together. And then, so that's how I learned. So I didn't get lessons, but watching, so you get to touch every club if you play in a scramble because yeah. you're playing from other people's distances. No so, player and no yeah. pressure. Yeah. So for me, I say if you can't get lessons, scrambles might be a good route for you if you're a good visual person or whatever and you can learn from other people and better golfers. Because for me, I try to play with the best golfers. If I play with the best golfers, I feel like, you know, good golf, you know, rubs off on me through osmosis or something. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, but again, I think if I was to do it all over again, I definitely would do lessons. But like I said, I mean, my route, my path was scrambles and then, and, it, and it's where it's at right now. And I yeah. absolutely you don't know it. what you, yeah, yeah, you don't know what you don't know. Sif, introduction in the game, you come from golf family, but so you have probably a little more insight in the beginning, but you a football guy. So it wasn't like you was just like golf, golf, golf. How'd you get in? How'd you start? How did you have a lesson? Yeah, actually, man. Um, um, I was introduced to the game uh, by an uh, uncle, um, not the great one, but an uncle. Uh, and I couldn't have been no more than maybe 10 or 11. That was when I first had an interaction with hitting a golf ball. And I hit it so sweet, and it was just unbelievable. But I never touched the club again 
until I got to college. And so what we oh, would wow. do on, on Fridays before football games, you had options. You could actually go to the movies or you could go out and play golf. And so I went to the movies all the time. So our quarterback said, Sif, you need to come out let's play some golf. I said, man, I ain't playing no damn golf. And I went out and I actually, um, you know, I hit hit a driver, hit it sweet. And, uh, you know, I, I said, well, you know, this this may not be bad at all. But I was very fortunate to be a pretty good baseball player. So I understood yeah. I understood rhythm uh, and I understood arc. And so mm. uh, for me, it was a, a little bit more easier transition just by taking it here and taking it down to the ground. Had to tweak a couple of things. Uh, but, you know, I kind of hit the ground running. And so as Manny alluded to some of the old heads, when I would go out there um, and play with them, they couldn't believe they thought I had I had been playing the game longer than um, what I told them. And uh, but, you know, a lot of them knew that I was a natural athlete. And, uh, you know, the rest is kind of history, man. But I, I honestly, if I had to I, cause I'm self-taught. So but if I had to do it all over again. Uh, and I had the money and all, you know, what I know, I probably would have um, intro, intro, introduced it the way that it was introduced to me, but eventually go get lessons from a, a coach. Because we mm-hmm. all have, to some degree, we all have Caddyshack swings. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, to a certain degree. And so, and the thing is, we've, we've, we've perfected that swing for so long it's very difficult to change it. And so that's yeah. kind of where we are. That's so it's very fortunate for these young people who are have interest in the game, learning it the right way so they'll have a fundamental golf swing. Definitely, definitely. Absolutely. Let's get that up. And that's yeah. and 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 then and for older people that get into golf, depending on how you get into golf, it's easier to just Truly, just go get a lesson. But if you're not, are you financially not even sure you want to invest right. in that? Then, you know, YouTube and people can give you tips. And the tips are not. And this is what I want to tell. This is why I always want to tell people on the phone. I just don't feel like typing that much and arguing that much with the typing. <laughs> tips is not to replace professional help. Right. Tips are to get them involved in golf enough that they want to go get clubs, that they want to go get lessons. Right. It's a jump from, I don't know, I never golf, and getting a few free tips to hitting the ball and hitting it great to being like, oh, I really want to get into this sport. Right. I think we can do both. I think we can give tips. I think we should always reinforce good teaching with you should go get a teacher when you're ready and i think we should also communicate like you need a teacher eventually you know i go to a swing coach now just to tweak my bad habits enough to be more consistent i'm not going to never dismantle my swing at my age i've been swinging my bad swing too long but you can give me better fundamentals to be more consistent with my bad swing but you know with my but, but the thing is, though, once you understand, once you understand, for like, well, I say for me, now that I understand my golf swing, and I don't have a bad golf swing, the, the key to understanding the, your golf swing is when it goes south, you know how to fix it. Fix it. That's On the, the court. That's, Boom. That's, that's the most important piece in understanding your golf swing. So that's I know if, I'm, if I'm, I'm pushing it, this shoulder's taking over. If I'm hooking yeah. it, I'm getting it too far inside or I'm not rotating. That's very, very important, man. And most yeah. of the time yeah. when you see um, amateurs, uh, well, we all are amateurs, but when you see newbies coming into the game, they, they could be on the range hitting it well, but they don't know how to fix their swing midstream. And exactly. that could be a recipe for disaster because that yeah. brings on frustration. And so that's why I say it's best to, once you, uh, like Manny alluded to, once you figure that you want to be in this game, Go find the coach because the thing the thing is, man. When someone else has eyes on you, you can't. It's just a, a it's just a minuscule, minuscule, minuscule. and you have no minuscule. idea what the hell's going on. And somebody with a trained eye can look at it and say, "This is what." Two seconds. Do. 
Two seconds. Yeah. Two seconds. Yeah. Get you back in line in two seconds. Crazy. And so with, with that said, we're going to um, start a series called The Golf Swing. And I put out like a little outline. And we're going to have, it's not going to be us because we are not professional teachers, of course. We just provide the platform for, um, in a, 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 a our guy just came on. Um, we just provide the platform. And what we want to do is break down the golf swing into, first we'll start with gas, grip, aim, stance, posture, right? That's if you're a beginner or even if you're a, a medium player or even a good player, you can always be reminded, hey, remember your grip, remember your aim, remember your stance, remember your posture. That is the building blocks to even start a good swing. No Got to have those four things. No doubt. You can have a great swing, and if your aim is off, you yeah. trying to correct something that's already good. I call it a pre-trip <laughs> inspection. Uh, Boom. You, 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 it is a must. If you're not on those railroad tracks, if you're, if you're attacking the golf ball, and if you don't, you don't uh, pick in a line, uh, you don't align properly, and you're not on the proper railroad tracks, then you might as well just say swing left-handed. Cause it's not gonna work. It, you're fighting, yeah. and it, and it's and it's so small. You can be. You think that you're lined up, and you could be. You know, two degrees, three degrees right, left. And if you're not lined up, man, it's not gonna work. Period. No, true, true. I I I I I put down a stick in front of my feet to get my three lines right: my feet, my waist, and my shoulders. When I'm at the range. And I don't do anything without at least at least one. Could be two, could be three, but I, I definitely don't even go to the range without at least one alignment stick. Because you can be hitting great shots, thinking that they're bad, and then trying to overcorrect something that you was aimed to the right, you was aimed to the left, and now you're trying to trying to fix a good swing when you was that's just where you were aimed. Posture is key. It's health for your back. It's helped for power. It's helped for balance. So we're going to get into that with professionals. We're not going to teach this stuff. We want to bring on different PGA Tour, I mean, PGA professionals, LPGA professionals, accredited uh, teachers to come and break down. We might just have one show with grip, the grip. And we'll go through different grips and why and how it's related to the club head and the aim and the path and why this strong, weak, neutral. We may go deep into the grip for 30 minutes just because and you can always go back and you might take something and, and, and you might not because every teacher is different. It depends on what you want out of it. And uh, Robert, we're going to bring you in. I just brought you in now and you can chime in, too, because what did what did the legend did say on our show? His best tip was steal what you can. <laughs> steal some knowledge. Go to the course, be mean to the course, and steal. Steal from the course. Steal from the teachers. Steal from good golfers. You never know. I do a lot of stealing. I try to work it in. I take it to my swing guy. You know, steal, steal, steal. Robert's in the house. Let's bring him in. What's going on, brother? Oh, oh man. man. You know, <laughs> living. You doing uh, good. Working, working and living. That's uh, right. Aren't we all? Man. How's the juniors doing? They're doing pretty well. We just came uh, came home from a middle school match this uh, this afternoon. So, you know, those can last long because they can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nine holes of fun. Uh, but yeah, like you said, um, it's funny because I told my son that today, like you came out here, you played this course last week, you scored better than you did last week, this week, you know, what did you learn? All those details. But I also asked, I said, did you ask those kids that you were playing with, you know, some tips, just questions, just ask, uh, because it's important, um, to just get information from people sometimes just so you can filter it in. You don't need to use it all, but. But to be able to Come hear on. it, sift through exactly. it, um, because it's really important. Like, you know, really, I, I want him. I always ask, ask him to ask, you know, how often do you practice? Because he plays with the ones. So, they, you know, he's like, wow, he's good. Like, 
Ask them how often they practice, how how mm-hmm. long, you know, mm-hmm. uh, where. Uh, we know most of the kids, so we kind of know many of them participate. They practice. They have golf clubs that they're members of. That's a whole disparity. Um, yeah. But also, there's you know some kids practice six days a week. Some kids practice every day. Um, and just try for him to start to see because if you're playing with these kids, then you need to know what they're doing. And some of them are doing too much, and that's cool. Right. And you're going to be able to do what you can do, and, and that's fine. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. also tell them to keep all of those things in perspective. That kid might play, you know, six days a week, and then uh, you were the low medalist today. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's exactly. What, that's what you three days. So when it's appropriate, and you can go practice six uh, six days a week, that will tell you something. You'll be able to improve even more than where you are right now. So you are already at the same space. And they're putting in more work and energy and effort, but you're already here. And so just to kind of help players sometimes understand that too is real big for what I do. Very nice. Let's get that up because I don't know in the golf circles, how come we don't want information? How, how come we don't want more information? We don't have to take it all in and, and, and call it Bible, but can't we take suck up all the information, filter what we need, take some of the information to other people we respect to get their feedback on it. How come we don't want all the information we want? I, I want the information. I want, I want information. I don't mean I'm going to use it all, but I want some information. What do you say, Trish? Because we, um, a lot of us think we know it all. We mm. already know it. We already know best. We don't want to mm. take feedback from nobody else. You mm. know, um, kind of an ego thing. You can figure You can figure it out on your own. I mean, for me, no, that's definitely well, true. Yeah, for me, it's a it's always a conversation of you know it's like ladies on the driving range. We always get a a plentiful amount of you know giving you know, advice. I I just noticed you know while I seen you swinging, I noticed this, I noticed that. You know, for me, it doesn't annoy me because you might tell me something, and like you say, I can keep it, I can try it, keep it if it works, and if it doesn't. Just go back to doing what I normally do, but you just never know what you might be able to pick up. So I'm not opposed to it. I know some ladies or some folks, they don't welcome it or don't care for it. But for me, they, these people have been doing it far longer than I have. And like you said, Sif, you know, they, they might have an eye. They can look and see, well, you know, you're coming across, you're coming over the top, you're coming inside, you're coming outside, you're, you know, whatever it is. And they could just give you that one little adjustment. Yeah. and change a whole it, swing so i appreciate it and welcome yeah, it yeah. i think it's uh timing too i uh, don't bug don't people on the range don't you know people are already not nervous but people want to get into their round because whatever you tell them most likely ain't gonna help them for that round right they just go they just gonna take some information and probably fuck their whole round up but i think it is a time and a place but I think we got to be open too for information. Maybe yeah, not on the range, or maybe not on the tee box. But yeah. we got to be open for some information. Well, you know, well the thing is, and, and just as Trish said, nobody has a monopoly on truth. A lot of times we think we do know it all, and in some cases we do. Um, yeah. The thing is, is this: uh, there are only probably four people who can give me information, and the reason that I say those four people because they've seen they've seen me hit the golf ball for five to seven years mm. and so with that being said they know my golf swing inside and out uh they know when i'm not rotating they know when i'm um you know coming over the top and they're able to give me some information um in order to correct that and so so i get it sometimes i you know when they give me that information i'll go to the end of the range and i'm down there working it out digging it out the mud the one thing I do hate is um, when those who think they have the monopoly on truth all of a sudden come down where you're working on the range and all of a sudden they're giving tips. And um, I can't take it. No, I can't take information. Yeah, and, and the I thing is, is that I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll stop and I'll just look and listen almost to the point to I hope they're getting uh, uh, you finished yet. And then mm-hmm. once they go back to where they are, I'll start hitting again. So I hope I give off that vibe because that's a that's a precious time where you're working something out. 
and somebody comes down there with something else and now all of a sudden you got all this going on and you know the the the, the shrink right here can tell you all about that uh mixed ideas and mixed emotions next thing you know you got a mixed up round and now you paying everybody at the end <laughs> <laughs> which yeah. you don't want to do i think Manny, what you're saying too is like uh and trish even said like so you know people i think i think sometimes this is where it gets uh it's information and it's knowledge uh but it is timing and the cool thing uh, that I, I tell all of my clients is actually my job is to teach you about your thinking so that way you don't have to think about it. Mm. Right. So, so that's, you know, so in the beginning, that means you're going to be very technical. Uh, you're going to really be thinking about what you're thinking. Like, am I thinking this, thinking that, you know, that whole when you get a swing change or something changes for you. And then what ends up coming is after that point, there's a tipping point of now I know what I'm doing, I'm doing it well. And now what I need to do is go ahead and trust the training that I've been putting forth in the energy and effort. Mm. And that's that, that's that tipping point. And most people, especially in the game of golf, that's really where they struggle because you are going to, um, if you, I mean, you, you could watch any TV show about golf or any swing coach or whatever, they're going to say, hey, this kid or guy is working on a swing change. And it's been about seven months. Right? Yeah. And this is a professional. And I'm like, Come seven on. months with a professional? Come on. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. What about, that's so what about that. us? Yeah. Right. And so that's <laughs> where I think the, the challenge is, is people need to understand that. Um, and, and the greatest thing my son, uh, his golf coach told him about now, it's been a, we are on, I think we are right around six or seven months. And he said, your swing, you won't notice for about eight, maybe nine months. So it's gonna be like mm. a full season. And so he keeps that in his mind. He's like, oh yeah, today. And I was like, what happened today? He's like, well, you know, I was hitting them longer than I than I had in my book. Like, hmm. He said, because I'm doing, uh, he's literally said, because I'm I'm making a, you know what I mean? The move is happening. I said, mm-hmm. okay. And there he's we now go. remembering the coach saying, it's gonna take a while. And once you do, man, boom, it's gonna do this. It's gonna, boom, yeah. it's gonna come off. It's gonna sound different. And so it, it you, is. Have to, you have to understand that before and even when you're telling them information, you know, it's kind of like it might work for a minute, but um, it's not going to sustain over time. And so, I mean, that's always a challenge anyway. Like if I'm working with somebody in general and it's during their season, it's a little challenging. You know, I'm going to give them information, but I'm not going to ask them to do things that I know will actually make a long term change until they're in the off season. Um, just because we want to, we still want them to perform well. We want them to be able to trust what they're doing. And so we don't want to mess them up, if you will. And so I try to uh, be very, very mindful of that with my clients, depending on where they are in their season and what type of season it might be, you know? So that's always something uh, that's, that's just, it's just unique and interesting when we hear that so-and-so has been working on that for the last six or seven months mm, on TV. Like, wow, it's true. That's that man's job. <laughs> Even that, he's yeah. working on that day for eight hours you know what i mean like and it's still taking six seven months so exactly. so that's what we're gonna do so like i said gas we're gonna work on grip aim stance and posture with different professionals to come on and tackle each one of those in a light fun-hearted way you may right. take something away you may not your teacher may teach you different. You may not, but these are going to be professional teachers that's going to give us information. Then we'll go to backswing. We'll go to the top of the backswing slot, then transition, follow through, balance, repeat. And we'll break those down into probably different teachers have different acronyms and different ways right. they break down the full swing. This is just what I came up with just to get us on track for the upcoming episodes but it'll be different people will say different things and we'll break it down and try to give some good knowledge especially to beginning golfers right yeah yeah we're gonna go ahead i'm sorry man we're going to always um put the prerequisite out when you're ready you need to go get a teacher You need to go get a golf professional. You got to go get one. But in the meantime and in between time, and and just my personal opinion too, 
I'm not never tell people, people ask me, because I've been fitted. I'm like, I'm not telling people to get fitted that don't have a consistent swing. The fitter fits you for the swing you bring that day. What are you bringing him that day? Are you bringing him the same thing you're going to do every day? I mean, you can have different tweaks and stuff, but what are you bringing him that day? Especially if you're a beginner. What you're doing now and what you're doing six months from now probably is going to be totally different, especially if you get some good instruction and you put in a lot of practice. So that's just me. Other people will be like, well, get fitted every six months. That's a good way not to have new golfers because that's a lot of money. <laughs> chunking down every six seven months on the on the, on the hustle so that's just me what say you guys i went and got so i went this weekend after playing in a tournament um over in orlando um it was a cigar a cigar it was a cigar fest event phenomenal and so got stuck in traffic the pj store was off to the left and we were like hey you want to go to the pj store and wait this traffic out so we did so we go in there and i was like you know what because my game is kind of where it's at. And I feel like I got faulty equipment. I've been made some adjustments to my equipment before understanding the equipment. So one of the things we're going to have Uncle E on here in a couple, in a few weeks and, mm -hmm. he, you know, talking to him, it broke down. Okay. So in my mind, my clubs were made for a five, five to five, eight golfer. I'm five, one, six foot in my mind, but I'm five, one. And um, so I sat there and I'm like, okay, my game got the, you know, low 80s 85 and i'm you know I, I got a couple of little you know shots in the 70s but it kind of just stayed there so i was like if i cut my clubs down by an inch and a half i can take my game down that's my mental that's my thought okay he explained you know now you know your shaft changes your loft changes the balance <laughs> weight, everything changes but i didn't know that you know I'm learning just all these go tools. start chopping you just go start chopping everything everything so um so and then the clubs literally was straight trash so pulled into the pj <laughs> store but like you said manny you can't get fit you can't fit a horrible swing and so my timing's off a little bit you know, so I went in there to get fitted. The guy told me he was like, look. And so I ended up getting a new set of clubs, but I didn't get fit for those clubs. I got me a new set of clubs. Um, well, what did the fitter tell you? He well, I told him that I'm not going to waste my money and getting fitted and getting new clubs to fit this trash swing right now. So I just and what did he and, say? I would like to see what he, he said. He agreed. He said, um, I wonder, yeah, because I want to see what a professional's view. This is just my opinion on it, but I would like to see what an actual fitter would say when to come back. Or it does, or I could still help you get close, and then you can, you know what I mean? I want to hear what the professional said. So, what he ended up doing was, um, so obviously, you go there when you're starting to get fit, you get fitted with your seven. So I went mm -hmm. out there, I'm swinging with my seven iron. My seven used to get one, like 150 with my seven. Mm -hmm. Easily, hands down. Right now, I got to, I think I mentioned before, pitching wedge. <laughs> pitching wedge, <laughs> nine, eight, seven, all them puppies go the same distance. So it's my food. <laughs> Don't judge me. And so, I remember not. <laughs> and I'm swinging out my shoes out this thing. Ooh, there you, that's why. That's why they all going the same distance. Literally, my seven was going like 120, and he was like, You got a really good swing, but there's just something off in the timing. So that's why I said, I'm like, I'm mm. not going to waste my money to get fitted into some clubs when my swing ain't right. So, got me some new clubs, played with them these last couple of days um, before I came up here to Virginia, and, and I love them, right? I love them. And, um, but the mental piece, Rob, is I hated my last club so much. And I blamed everything on my trash clubs that I just I, I feel like my game was affected by that because I was like, I didn't like my clubs. Like right now, I love my clubs. And I shot um, the other day, I shot like an 88 um, yesterday before I flew here to Virginia. I shot 88. And that was with three put in three holes. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, you know, so it wasn't the clubs, it was my putting that, you know, had my game score, you know, high or whatever. But again, the equipment, the swing, all that stuff, I am so looking forward to these next couple of series because this game is so real and so mental and all the way to the equipment. 
Yeah, I, I'll tell you the the equipment is. Uh, you, know, you guys are gonna have these uh, experts on, so it, I'll I will be listening because it's interesting. You know, and this is I think a community thing. Yeah, I'm just definitely because like. I'm just saying, growing up, like, we played the major sports. So basketball, football, even baseball at the time. Like, you just go out there with what we used to have was raggedy stuff. Yeah. And, 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 and we would make it work. And um, I, I pretty much – so there's – I got – I go all over on this one. But there is a space for building confidence in the tools that we have. Hmm. You know, I like that. Yeah, no, so, no, I feel you on that. That's so. That's what I try to for my own personal kids because you. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying this stuff is expensive. Mm. Okay, my yeah. son. Was, the day he was like, Dad, this kid had PXG, and then he had this new. I'm like, Yeah, he had the new new right in a private school. <laughs> kid. I said, Yeah, look, <clears throat> you got the old thing, and it goes about right where his is going with the new new. And I said, and he was like, yeah, but if I had that new, <laughs> you know, <what> I mean? <laughs> it like, didn't yeah, go further. Mm, let's work with what we have. So I always say, like, there is a space. You're like in the in between, right, Trish? And, and it's funny because the, the cool thing is you can still work on your swing and do everything that you need to do and make it happen. Um, and what I do know from working with professional golfers is like they can take your clubs, they can take Sips clubs. They can take Manny's club. They're going to make it work. And they're going to get a par. And you can be like, how did they hit my club 290 yards? Because they got the top. Their swing is so right. Like, Technique. And they, they feel Technique. like they're like, oh, this is a little lighter. I'm going to swing like 70%. But that's their, their professionals. And so I always share that with my kids. I mean, you can give these clubs to anybody. And they can go out there and make it happen. Um, and, and so you, there's that. And so definitely. But, but it's, again, one of the things with confidence and building it is this. It's a physical piece where we say if we feel good, it's old Dion. If I look good, I feel good, I play good. It's mm -hmm. true. Because it does. And, you know, think about it. When you get your hair done, when you get a haircut, you get the shave, it looks good. You put your shoulders back. You, look you feel easy. good. Yeah, you ready. You ready for war. Yeah. You see it like a crispy on the day? Like it's crispy. Great. Oh, I'm ready for war. What's up? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, on. I'm on. I can make it. And That's it does. Great. It builds that confidence. And it does, it changes your posture mm. to the right place where you should be. You know, with the trash clubs, you lump down, you're like, these clubs, they <laughs> trash. And then, then you get it like that. So, you know, those are all key aspects about building mm. uh, the base of the swing. And so uh, it can kind of go both ways. I, I've, I've been on both sides of it where uh, my daughter, 14, she's been fitted. Uh, so she has a custom set of clubs. Um, and it, you, you see a difference. Um, my son, he took my clubs and the fitter, uh, made the weights appropriate for him. Okay. That's what he was doing. Like, like, yeah, she was like, I just cut them things. And so then like, he told me all of that, like, okay, well now the weighting of the club is going to be different. So he did all the things. And that's the important part too. Like, it's okay to get a, a kid some you know, older clubs and get them to, to his size as they grow. Uh, Cause that's another thing. My son is 12. I'm not getting him a custom set of golf clubs. No. Yeah. Not He'll be out of it in a year or two. Not going to do it. Um, he's growing. So he's growing. And, and my daughter, she's 14. So she's right there. We took care of that. Uh, she'll need a new, new fitting. She can have the same club, but she'll need a new fitting probably in about two years. Um, mm -hmm. Just because she's going to grow, swing's going to continue to get a little bit faster, shafts and all that stuff. But it's good to have that information and knowledge uh, yeah. to help build these kids specifically. And even us as um, people who go out and play, we want to make sure that we have the, the appropriate material. I mean, um, I mean, I have a player who plays down in the PGA uh, Latin America tour. So, I mean, he's he's told me literally he putter will break on the trips or whatever, and he'll just just go to the clubhouse and and which I got and it's like Odyssey from 13 years ago. I guess <laughs> I put it in the bag. <laughs> and I mean he does fairly well, but there's some there's you're not as confident with it. You don't know the speed and the roll and this. 
and that's okay too. But but to know it and understand it, I think is really um, so. Hopefully, your guests will break down the myths behind it. Yeah, that's and that's what we want to get to the myths. Yeah. And yeah. and if you get to a good fitter, you also get some knowledge on mm. why and the fit and why he's doing this to pertaining to your swing and right. why a lie up mm. one or two or you know why this shaft needs to kick in the middle and not tip it at the bottom to make it you know so then you'll the more knowledge you get about your own personal swing mm -hmm. will help you in the end too so again we're not at least me in my opinion i am not discounting getting fitted i'm not discounting getting uh, a, a teacher is it's, it's fast and it's quick and as comfortable as you feel immediately i want people to love the game and not get discouraged from the cost right yeah. i want them to be in the game first then because once you love something then you don't care what it costs or you'll work hard to get yeah, what you, i don't want them to be turned off from right from the stuff it's a lot of stuff in <laughs> golf. I can't, it's a lot yeah, man, it's a lot of stuff that can that can bleed your pockets if you ain't careful. Yeah. You can get in the clubhouse and get a few shirts and the shoes. I think you're done for the day. You ain't yeah. even going to be able to eat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'd rather have people love the game than just and, – and try to give them some tips that we're going to try to do on the show instead of get a teacher, go get right. a lesson. They're like, well, man, I just, I, I just came to the range. I only got one club. Yeah, yeah, go get a teacher. Teach, you, teach me what? I only got one club. What am I getting taught? Yeah. We can't get this. I, I'll tell you guys this. Like, um, so a lot of a lot of times where I, I'll share with you about fitting Manny that I've learned just being around and, and, and understanding how this stuff works. Because um, our big things are people want to go get fitted and they want to get a new driver. Mm. They want a new three wood. Then they'll be like, well, maybe I'll get some irons. But really, the, the four clubs or three to four clubs that you need to get fitted for anyway are your wedges and your mm. putter. Mm. And people are like, First. The putter. I'm like, oh, the putter. If you, and if you are still kind of newish to it, I would say the investment spot would be to get a putter fitting and then mm. make sure first. That that's, that's first. That's and dope. We, that's kind of nice. Do. Think about it, right? I always tell people, just think about it. You, you, you play. Trish just told me she had them, <clears throat> had them three butts. Um, mm -hmm. so you, know, you know what I mean? We we could break down an eighteen. I mean, see if you can give me any any one of your eighteen whole rounds. No matter how many rounds you give me, you're gonna have to use that putter almost two times as much as any other club in your golf bag. Three so times as much as a driver. You know what I mean? So I, I want that to be fit and right because I'm going to use it mm -hmm. the most. And so once that's done, then I can work back in my bag. And I think mm -hmm. especially for um, people who are just starting, if we can get them that right away, you know, that something to, to roll the ball, teach them that, then then you'll they'll, they'll actually love it faster because guess what's happening with putting? It's getting in the hole. Yeah. It's a completion. It's it's, yeah. It feels good, and they're like, "Man, yeah. I hit it over here and over there." Because it's like you hear chipping and putting; those are the things. Uh, so if you can get at somebody who's beginning, getting started, or my opinion and advice, and just from again being around this is, man, it's people because people don't do it. They don't get their, they don't get, they get everything they else, get their bag, and then they just go buy the hot putter. You know, let me get that uh, Scotty Cameron putter just because. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, that's yeah. cool. Do you need a yeah? Do you need a blade? Do you need a mallet? What's your what's your putty oh, yeah. arc? You know what yeah. I mean? That's true. If Man, you look at that, that's uh, crazy important. If you look at uh, if you look in my bag, into Robert's point, um, Susie's been with me for a long time. It's my putter, and you can look at the hosel and see burn marks because every three months I check the lie on my putter, and so I've actually had to bend it. Um, you know, a, a degree here, a degree there, but it, but it all, but it's, it's been in my bag forever. And so with the, the club fitting piece, I've never been fitted for a set of clubs. Okay. Um, I've never in my life have been fitted. Those clubs have shot sixties 
on numerous occasions. <laughs> because the thing for me is I have to I'm a I'm kind of a, a kind of like Big Charlie. I'm a hands guy. Mm. And so there's no sense in me going to get fitted for a club and get it getting a uh getting uh a shaft that's duplicate in all of those clubs. That means I have to go one hundred percent all the time where I don't want to go one hundred percent on certain shots. I want to be able to bend it. I want to be able to hold it off. Uh, there's a lot of things that I want to do, and I and I've played long enough to know uh, how to do that versus going to spend you know fifteen two thousand dollars on a set of clubs. And so mm. you know, into each his own. You know, I know a lot of people who go get fitted. I, I truly believe if you got a certain club head, I mean a certain uh, speed swing speed. I think you're wasting your time um, going to get fitted. Um, mm. That's just my opinion. No, no, no. I feel you. I feel you on that. I, I also want to dig in, in the show about some, if we can dig up history on our era, our golden era legends like your unk and uh, 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 Pete and, and Dent and, and our legends. They did that work themselves. They was tipping those clubs. It wasn't no such thing. I'm gonna go get fit. They worked on it. Yeah. But they worked on it ad hoc. Like they wouldn't just go do a whole set. They'd be like, yeah, I'm feeling this way with the driver. Let me tip my driver or let me do this or let me do that. So, you know. Um But they again, were all but they were all handsy players back then. All, if, two. You look, if you look yeah. at them back in the day, they really didn't use with the exception of probably Dent. They, a lot of them didn't use the big muscles. They didn't use the shoulders. Uh, they didn't use the, you know, the 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 the, 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 uh, the thighs. Uh, they were more so handsy. You know, Big Charlie was a handsy guy. That's why he played the draw because he'd sling it. And so, mm. you know, so now when you're using hands, you can feel the, the head of a club. You can feel mm. if that shaft's not bending or if it's bending too much. So now you can go in the garage and work on your own stuff. Now you got the guys who play now, they use the big the big muscles. So the mm -hmm. big muscle is what hits the ball. And so now when you see that damn club bowed back like that, it's because these this is already gone. And that club's <laughs> trying to catch up with it. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's the power. They're trying to power through the shot with full extension. No hands. No hands. No, no hands. Power through, yeah. especially on the drive. No hands. No hands. Um, so I think the series is going to be entertaining. Like I said, we ain't teaching nothing because we don't know enough to be teaching anything. We just want to bring on people that have different ideas and different techniques. And you can steal a little something or you may not. But what we're going to provide is a series of the golf stream uh, swing broken down into many different sections. And like yeah. I said, and like Sif always says, no one has a monopoly on truth, but hopefully new golfers or golfers that are afraid to kind of ask questions. And what we're doing with this too, Rob, is we're going to have our teachers and we're going to still have the live chat. So where people in the chat can ask questions and people, it, it's all live. And of course, you can go back and listen to it in your car and listen to it on YouTube. But when we're on on Wednesdays, at 8 p.m. Eastern, you're going to be able to be on and be like, well, and ask the teacher, well, why do I think I need a neutral grip or a strong grip or a weak grip or why, why, what, what, where is my relation to the club head with this grip? Or, you know, you'll be able to ask. That's not a substitute, people, for not go getting your own swing coach. <laughs> it's not a substitute. <laughs> it just, we're just trying to provide some content and some context that maybe you could steal something. That's what the legend didn't told us. Steal what you can. Yeah. The stuff you steal, you're going to find something in somebody else's teaching that you can implement into your own game. Uh, I think that's it for tonight. We're going to go around and let everybody have some last words and get something off their chest. Rob, you was last on, but you're going to be first to let us know what's going on in your world with your juniors, with your business, and you in general. Awesome. Well, uh, it's been definitely uh, I've been blessed uh, being busy, uh, which is a good thing. And just really, uh, like I mentioned earlier, is just teaching people how to think about their thinking so that they don't have to think about it and they can just start trusting their training. And so 
uh, that's where I'm at right now, working with um, uh, some pretty high profile folks that, that I'm really excited about their upcoming futures. Nice. Uh, nice. And in my own crazy two kids that golf. And then my <laughs> own two young ones who are trying to find what they do best. But uh, this is a game, as my wife mentioned to me today, man, I see uh, this is a mental game. I said, mm. yeah, man, it's tough. Dad does, so um, <laughs> I thought that was in, important for her to also start seeing that as a spectator, watching our children and the other kids as well that play. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's what I'm excited for in my future. You know, and the summer is coming, so there's a lot of junior golf events and activities going on for people. And mm -hmm. I appreciate what you all are doing here, just keeping the conversation going, getting your great guests to come on and just share their platform. And so. You know, again, uh, people are looking for that mental game uh, because, again, as I always say, like if you play this game or you do any sport, people understand that there's a portion of this game that is mental. And if you're not intentionally or deliberately training that portion, then you're missing out. And so why miss out? Mm -hmm. uh, you can contact me uh, at Elite Minds LLC on, on Instagram or on Facebook uh, at any time. And so I would look forward to just kind of working with people, answering questions. Uh, or doing what it is that they need to be done so that they can work on this uh, most important part of the golf game. Definitely. Wow. Big Seth, <laughs> parting words. Um, yeah, Rob, anytime that I'm around um, anyone who's trying to make a leap in this game of golf, especially high school kids who have aspirations to uh, matriculate into an institution, you know, kids that are serious about the game and a scholarship, I always tell them about you. Always. You know, I mm. you know, I give them your uh, your social media stuff and I said, look, the thing is, guys, what you fail because they're young. I mm -hmm. said, what you fail to understand is, and I say, you know, you have a lot of talent. Matter of fact, Nick Lowry was one of the ones that I gave you information to. He's playing in the amateur. He's out of, of high point. I mean, gobs of talent. I said, what you guys fail to understand is is this. I said, you're good in your area. You know, you're the best in your area. I said, but when you make that next leap, you're playing the best in the world. Mm -hmm. And I said, it only takes one hiccup. It only takes one lip out. It only takes um, one duff for you to throw everything in the toilet. I said, so you need to contact this guy. And I told, gave him your information so that you can think it through. You can think it all the way through the end and stay mm. in the moment because a lot of times, man, even even us amateurs, I, like the other day, I went out and shot thirty two on the front, forty one on the back. That's 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 crazy. But the thing was, there was something in the back of my mind that I was thinking. I, it was the subconscious. I thought it wasn't there, but it was there. And um, you know, you 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 can't play golf like that. But but they people should, if they're serious about not even golf, man, I'm talking about wellness. If they're serious about uh, wellness, um, uh, athletics, they need to come visit you, man, because you, I'm telling you, you could help them like they wouldn't believe. So I've, I've been passing mm. out your information. So if you start to receive inboxes, that's what it's from. Appreciate that's looking, Big Seth. All right, Trish, you had the grandbaby on. Give us some last words, Grandma Mama. <laughs> <laughs> They quit so, hacking them clubs. Don't do yeah. that. Don't get it twisted now. Oh, no, we're not doing that no more. We're not doing it. We'll leave that to the professionals. We'll leave that to yeah, the professionals. Right. But, um, you know, just, to, you know, again, this game, um, when the folks, the new folks are out there asking, you know, hey, you know, what can I do about my swing or what should I do with my swing? Let us let us be more welcoming. I mean, yeah. again, like we said, we, we all started in a different place at once upon a time. You know, whether it was lessons, no lessons. But this game is hard enough as it is than to, you know, have to be, you know, welcomed by somebody not so welcoming. So, you know, let's just, you know, make it a, our own little cause when people ask about the game or whichever. We love it. So share why we love it um, and, 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 and be more welcoming to the folks that are, you know, the newbies to the game. That's right. That's right. Get that out. All right. That's about it. Yeah. Because that's what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to start asking them what what do you want to know and what do you think and why are you even asking what your question you know what i mean and again let's let's just put it out there we all agree 
that you should go see a professional. The earliest and the earlier, the better, for sure. But we also want your interest to be real. And if it takes whatever, however long it takes to get you to love the game, that's what we want to do too. But definitely, we want you to definitely get professional help uh enjoy the game better but there's always tips and hey the old man told me he gave me the best tip like i said he was like here's your grip here's that little plastic foam thing coming out the uh the, the 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 pad and make your v and when you can hit that every time consistently then you can get a ball Ain't no need to be wasting balls if you can't hit your plastic tee every time. And that was my first lesson. And I think by the time I was having fun just trying to hit the plastic tee. Saved me a whole lot of money. Then when I put the ball down, I I hit the ball every time. It went all crazy and everywhere, but at least I was hitting the ball. No whiffles, you know, and then so on and so forth and so on and so forth. So, yeah, you know. Um, hopefully the series will be well received. I think we're going to just continue it on and on. We'll try to go through the whole, everything, the whole entire swing, then repeat certain things. And there'll always be some kind of resource. And again, you know, take a little, don't take any, but at least we'll have some conversations about the golf swing. We, we talk about everything else. We have some conversations about the golf swing. Big Sif. So last thing for me. Do you guys, and it may just be me, but I wanted to ask someone else, do you guys really enjoy the game? Um, and that, that probably sounds like a stupid question, but do you guys really enjoy the game when uh, you're not playing so well? You know, some people, I see some people out on the golf course, they could be in front of me, they hit it two feet, they hit it three feet, and they hit it, you know, eight feet in the fairway and they drive the carts over there. And I and I say I say to myself while I'm on the tee watching that, I say to myself, and this is selfish. I say <laughs> when I get if I get to that level right there, I'm gonna find something else to do. I mean seriously, because for me it's it's competition. And and if I get to that point, I'll try to pick up the bass guitar, the piano, or do something else. Um, yeah. um... Don't they don't know what they they don't know what they don't know they don't even know what good golf is you're coming from a place of shooting in the 60s and the low 70s consistently and you're hitting 280 almost 300 yard drives and chipping it close with backspin that's good golf to us right, right. but if you ask that young boy that was just making a v hitting a plastic thing if I was hitting it four feet, that was like two feet more than I just hit it before. So I'm having a great freaking time. So it's all relative. It's all relative. I think the question is, can you be satisfied with horrible golf for a long period of time? When do you? When does it click that, hey, I think I want to get better? I think I need to seek some very, very professional help and or get need better. A new hobby. Or, yeah. or need a new hobby. Or should they? You know, maybe if, but if they're having fun, who are we to say their fun is not our fun? That's why I asked. They That's may want to have beer. They may just want to leave. The, they out the house in the fresh air, no wife behind them. They having five hours of fun. Maybe mm -hmm. at our expense because it's, it's making them round slow as hell, but they're having a ball. They can't even walk straight. They having a ball. Yeah. I enjoy yeah. it, even if my game is bad. Even if my game is bad, like literally, like I say, I shot an 88 with three three putts, right? Um, I blew up my round in two holes, two holes, because even the three putt on one of the holes was it turned out to be a bogey, but I was on in two. The thing that I enjoy about it is, like we said earlier, I know now what I'm doing wrong to go back and fix. I know. I'm cross-eyed and my alignment is terrible. I'm not taking my time and doing my process when I get ready to put. I'm just going up there, getting my line as I'm walking up to it and really not taking it serious. So I can't be mad at nobody else but myself, but I know what I'm doing wrong. So even when I'm playing trash, I still love and enjoy the game because it's not even just about the game. Y'all all know I'm taking pictures of alligators, hawks, 
turtles, <laughs> everything. So that's my thing. I love I love all all things I'm about, about the golf. I'm about to bite the club in half. I ain't doing none of that. <laughs> I don't that the term before. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think I think it's I think it's like the funniest thing is when you when you ask that question, it, it it's a uh, it's it's just, man. If you didn't play football, <laughs> man, that resonated because it's tough to watch, but. The, the keys for all of this, right, is for those people that you talked about and, and for yourself is you want to make sure that your expectations meet and match and marry your reality. Mm-hmm. I like that. So when that when it's not, you know, either way, up or down, that, it doesn't matter. Um, that's when you'll that's what that's what happens. And so it, it's not enjoyable. Uh, when our expectations and our reality don't ma- match. And that's in everything that we do. Uh, mm-hmm. And so, like, when you mention that, I'm thinking, but my expectation, because <laughs> I'm also, and this goes back to seeking help, because I'm an athlete. So I should be able mm-hmm. to do this. Uh, yeah. But this particular game is extremely humbling. And um, and, and so that's where, you know, it's so funny, because when you ask, yes, uh, I don't know if I enjoy it when I play poorly, but I also know that I, I'm a gamer, um, you know, when necessary, you know, that that's just how I play. I don't play as much now because of the kids. I watch, I help, I coach there, this, that. Um, but if, if any one of those kids be like, man, you can't play, oh, let me have your U.S. kid club. And, let's <laughs> <do this. laughs> that's that's and it's right. going to be, that's like, right. hey, how, how'd you hit it? Way down there with this, because you said I couldn't do it. You know, yeah, so that's that you know, competitiveness and all that. Exactly. Comes yes. Beautiful. Uh, marrying those expectations with the reality is 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 key, uh, specifically in this game. But but definitely that's those people that enjoy it and they play poorly. That's their expectation and that's their reality at the same time. So they're having a great time. So good for them. Definitely. Good beginning conversation. We're going to dig deeper to the golf swing as best we can and bring another element to this conversation. And on that note, guess what? We are out. Peace.